often get asked about the killer shine I get on the vehicles, like the car, uh, the bikes, push bikes, and the stuff I use is this. That's, that's all I use to get on the metal or any shiny surface. And I've, I've had this for years. Years ago, you were only be able to get it from custom car shows or mail order. But now it's available in most motor spare shops. Not, not too sure about Halfords. I think Halfords have stocked it in the past. I'm sure I've seen it in there. I got this from the car boot sale, a vendor who sold it, and I got it a little bit cheaper. I think I paid 10.95. It's about 12.95 retail, but that lasts ages. That's a thousand mil, and you can get it in a small one, half that, and you can get it in a massive 3,000 mil. But I've used it for so long, and I've got a technique that I use that I'll share with you now that works for me. Some people tend to, you know, my mate got some years ago, and he he, he got one of these and he coated his whole car in it and he had a nightmare. He left it, I think he left it overnight. So the next day it was just like frosted. That's like icing sugar over it. And he had to put some more on to get it off. So don't do that. Anything with a shiny surface is sorted, including things like spectacles and windows of your house, um, panels of hi-fi, acrylic panels. I even use it on my fat chopper. So you want to use a big rag like that. T ideal t-shirts, worn t-shirts, well washed, and they're perfect. And then at the end of it, you'll probably buff it over one of those microfiber dusters. But the technique I use, I, I basically rub it on and, in, and literally keep rubbing it in. And before it's had time to dry off, I use the dry part of the duster to polish it. So you rub it on, polish it off, and then I do an overall buff. That's it. So I'll show you what I'm going to do now on this. Black cars are a nightmare. This isn't that dirty anyway. I've done some panels here, but uh, once you've done it, you'll find every time you do it after that will be easier because it puts a polymer glaze on the car or vehicle or anything. So when you do it again, it's a lot more easy to do. Plus when it rains, it just beads, just beads off it. And you'll notice that. And the, you know, everybody else's car looks a mess with all the uh, dust in the air, but your car will look nice and shiny. So right. There you go. So I've done it to about there, so you basically want to create an area. So roughly about 7 by 7 8 by 10 it doesn't really matter that much, but don't go too big. Because if you do, by the time you finish polishing it out, the, air, the edges will have dried thoroughly and you're going to get like little, you look like a mosaic. Circular motion or whatever you want, doesn't really matter. See, I hope this camera's picking up because anything about cameras, they can make anything look good, even if they're rubbish. Um, under the edge of the door here. There you go. I'm not going to try and get anything on this, this is just like a plastic. It doesn't matter if you do, just don't pot, try and polish that, that won't happen. Um, I'll take you around to the front of the, uh, there's a panel at the side there which I'll show you. Uh, it's got a deep scratch on there some time back. Um, you can see a scratch there, you see. It won't get rid of the scratch. What it'll do, it'll bevel the edges so the scratch, the scratch isn't so obvious. That's how it works. That's a very deep scratch. That was a key. Somebody obviously took offence to the car before I had it. But I'll come back to th that bit again in a minute. But can we see the difference on the roof? So you might not be picking this up. That's the bit I've done. Could be careful, it'll slide off. And I've done up to this bit here. Don't do your front screen. And don't do your rear screen. But you can do your side windows. You can do um, any chrome bits like this skull here. Even though it's plastic, it's acrylic, it's polished acrylic. Do your lights. 
acrylic lights. In okay, case, uh, chrome exhaust tips. Now, there's all dust down here, and if I probably rub my finger, I probably could scratch it. But I'm just going to go straight on with the mirror, like that. It just saves time. I mean, you can faff about washing the car, giving it a dry off, then put the mirror on if you're really anal about it. But it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's going to get polished. End of story. So this is the this is the. The grimy, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna go do it to there, see if you can see the difference on the camera. I mean, after I can, but with video, when you're doing it in high def on a digital camera, it tends to make things look shiny anyway. It's gonna be a bit of hard work, and sometimes a lot of hard work. And you so, tip it up, get some money in like that. There you go. What's going on there? Here we go. Right. Yeah, the other trick is not to do it in the direct sunlight. So, what I'm doing now, this car is parked so the sun's on that side. So, I'm going to switch it around. Don't do it in the in direct sunlight because you'll end up streaking it and chasing it around. So, let's pick a bit there if you can get that. It's all nice and it's all like gritty and horrible rainwater. I'm just going to go like that. And say, so before it is dried, you need to polish it fully dried I mean you just say you can leave on to a, a fine dust and wipe it off but this is the technique I've used for many 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 years do that boom there you go so work in a small area at a time I mean it goes a long way you know I've had the last bottle of this lasted for years I mean, it's only a small car it's Fiesta but you know bigger the car don't be fooled that it's just a magic potion because it's not you know you need to be a bit a uh, bit of elbow grease but there's bird lime there no problem at all rub it all in come back here big areas like the roof and the bonnet or if you're in america the hood are obviously more tricky because you can get panels where you can see where you've been but if you do it like this at least then you can go back into the areas. So if I've got a, a line here that when this is finished and it's got little sections, I'll just go over those lines so you, bl you blend it all in. Another variation, if I'm in a bit of a hurry as well, which is even quicker than the rag on wipe off thing is having two. Uh, in left hand, depends which way you are, left handed, right handed. I've got the polisher and um, in the right hand I've got the the rubbin rag and so I don't get any areas where I've been and, and squares I'll just keep going over it. See the thing about the wet one is when you've gone over like that with the polisher and you see any lines you just go into it and straight away it's gone like most things in life, the more you rub it, the better it gets. And uh, the two cloth method. See that that on my cloth now. Once I've finished, we'll still have enough on there to do other things. Smooth as a baby's bottom. Um, there you go. So back to the bonnet. I say subdued light now, sun's still out but it's over there, not on my car. This is a much better way of doing it, so I don't get any streaking. Well that's it, basically done. I've washed the windows with some just washing up liquid sponge, so you don't put it on your front screen or your rear screen. And I say this is the final buff cloth, one of those microfiber ones. Very good. An overall polish. Um, I do all the water traps as well, Mike. Most people forget this bit here, all down the door recess and the catch area here. All the sills right down to the bottom there. Um, top of the doors, all the way down. Water trap. It'll protect 
to stop them water collecting. They just beat off. That light's got it as well, that's they're covered in it. Just have that polymer protection. Pro tips. Same to you. Um, like I say, the more you load it on, the deeper the shine. It's like silk now. Side windows. And the more you apply, the thicker the coat, the more polymer protection you've got against mold, stone chips, etc.